I said, you know, what do we do? Like, do we follow up with trail? Like, what are we doing? And he just very quietly said, you take him home and enjoy him because this baby's not going to live. My pregnancy was normal, all of my ultrasounds, I had plenty of amniotic fluid. That's usually a key that there's something wrong with the kidneys when a mom has lower fluid levels. His APGAR scores were 9 and 10. He was, you know, he was, looking back now, he, I think he looks very puffy and sick, but back then I just thought he was a nice chubby little cherub and we took him home. And uh, four days later when the health nurse came, um, to do the home check. Zach was 813 when he was born. He was just under eight pounds when we took him home. Um, they expect him to be back at birth weight by about day four, and he was barely six pounds. They diagnosed it with something called hypoplasia, dysplasia of the kidneys, which essentially means small misshapen kidneys. They don't, his aren't shaped like a kidney shape, and they're not as big as they should be and nor would they probably ever grow. They didn't have the nephrons that a normal kidney would have. So we knew pretty quickly upon arrival that he was in pretty serious trouble. So we packed him up and we brought him home. <laughs> Sorry. And we just spent the next two years just loving him and doing what they told us to do. When, uh, when he survived to two, PC Children's Hospital got in touch with us again and said, wow, you know, good for him. I guess we'll start seeing him again then because back then um, there was no dialysis for babies. There was no transplant for babies. Um, if he didn't fight and survive on his own, then we would have lost him. He had a, a few meds and a dietary things and he did really good up until puberty and that was kind of what they thought that once puberty hit and that he would probably decline in quickly because your kidneys actually control your growth hormones, your minerals, your vitamins, the absorption, your bone growth, like, it, I mean, they do everything. So when puberty hit and he started to really grow, we had an appointment in August and he was great. And then we had one in October and the numbers had just crashed. Transplant was no longer on the table. He needed immediate like intervention for dialysis. 10 hours of every night is spent hooked up to a machine. So, you know, most kids can come and go at their leisure. I mean, they don't have to, you know, if Zach works on a Saturday, but he wants to go hang out with his friends on Friday, he has to factor in those 10 hours. Is he gonna be done his dialysis or am I gonna have to pick him up two or three hours earlier than everybody else because he's gotta come home and get hooked up and do his therapy so that he's able to get to work on time or school on time. We had created a page for Zachary called Zach Needs a Kidney Like Yesterday because he does and you know sharing it and sharing other stories and putting out you know this hope had sparked interest in a friend of mine from high school and she went quietly behind the scenes and got tested and found that she was a match. Zach and Mace have something to share with everyone. Nice. We talked about how, you know, it was sort of like meant to be and the stars aligned and all of that and it really did feel like that and June 1st of 2017, um, I walked my son into his surgery and I told him when he woke up that it was going to be okay and he would be well and, you know, it would be over. Eight and a half hours later, we found out that um, the surgery didn't go well, that um, one of the surgeons had made an error and it clotted off the kidney. And uh, the next morning, after a, a, a renal scan, a nuclear scan, uh, they realized that the kidney was completely nephrotic, it was black, and he went back in for his fourth surgery in 24 hours to remove the donor kidney. 
probably the worst moment of my life was having him wake up and ask how it went and having to tell him that it didn't that it didn't work they had to take it out and the dark days after for him I mean it was just heartbreaking to to watch him and you know he was just just so sad and so angry because he had Donna's kidney in him for that 24 hours when Zachary went into that surgery he had zero antibodies he had beautiful blood as they said and having that kidney in him for 24 hours has caused him to develop 99.9 percent .9 sensitivity and so just to give an idea of what that means if we took 3,000 people across different ethnicities, countries, you know, whatever, and pooled them and cross-matched them with Zach, zero people would match him. I am searching. I am searching for my son, but I'm just searching for anybody. I'm searching for people to sign up to be a deceased donor. I'm searching for people to consider being a live donor. I'm searching for people to encourage others to, to, to be that person for someone else, if, if not for Zach. Every person that I help find their kidney is one less person that my son is up against. And I consider it a huge win when someone else hears our story and gets their story out and gets a kidney. I won't lie, it's always a small little bit of a kick that it's not us, but it doesn't take long for me to kind of get over that and just see, you know, the beauty in it and know that our story has changed someone else's life. And I know that Zach will get his turn. I, I don't doubt that for one second. And I think that we were given this life for a reason.